The arrival of Daimler's DT12 automated manual transmission wasn't unexpected. With the company's push towards global commonality in powertrain components, a North American version of the DT12 was inevitable. The DT12 has been in service in Europe for several years now, so it arrives on our shores tried and true. I'm guessing beads of sweat are already forming on competitors' brows. Hi, I'm Jim Park, freelance trucking journalist, and this time we're coming to you from Napa, California. We're here test driving Freightliner's new 12-speed automated manual transmission, the DT12. In the first of our three-part DT12 series, we tour the vineyards of Napa, California to see how the transmission handles the basic stuff, stopping and starting, city driving, and a few small grades. In part two, we'll play around with the economy and performance mode, and we'll see how much influence the driver still has over the shift schedules. Part 3 is where I put the boots to it. We took the truck over to Hunter Hill on Interstate 80, just east of Vallejo, California. That's where we compared the economy and performance modes in a climb. We also gave the engine brake a bit of a workout with some surprising results. First, let's look at the nuts and bolts. The DT12 is a 12-speed, non-synchronized manual transmission with air-activated XY shift and clutch actuators. It has a single countershaft and an aluminum housing to keep the weight down, and it's available with overdrive or direct gearing. It was designed and programmed with fuel economy in mind. Because the electronics and the onboard controllers are integrated with Daimler's DD series engines, communication between the transmission and the engine allows some amazing functionality. There's a few tricks up the dt 12 sleeve too. E-Coast decouples the transmission from the drivetrain while coasting in cruise to reduce mechanical drag. Creep mode lets the transmission up and downshift with the engine at idle in stop and go traffic. The kick down function works like a passing gear initiating a downshift to increase horsepower while passing. And economy and performance modes change the shifting strategy to match conditions or driver preference. Let's get started with the basic up and down shifting and clutch performance. Second to third, third to fifth, fifth to seventh at fifteen hundred, and seventh to eighth at fourteen fifty. So she's really a low RPM shift program there. That's the idea to keep the revs between eleven hundred and fifteen hundred or so. That's your prime fuel economy. Now we're up to ninth gear. 1300 RPM at 30 miles an hour. And now let's have a look at how creep mode works. When you're at a light like this, if you take your foot off the brake, the creep mode engages and the truck just starts to inch forward much the same way a transmission with a torque converter would do. There's no clutch input on my part at all. Obviously it's a two pedal transmission, but as soon as the uh, truck senses the brakes are released, and uh, no other inputs, it will engage the clutch gently, barely even feel the engagement, and will start slowly creeping forward. In creep mode, you can also upshift as well. So now we're in creep second. If I upshift to creep, now I'm in creep third gear. So I've got third out of it, I'm still idling, but in third gear, we're just creeping our way along. An ideal feature in uh, heavy traffic. And here's how E-Coast works. I had just crested a small hill, and we were beginning to roll out down the other side when, as expected, the engine RPM just dropped to idle. And now we're in uh, E-Coast. You can see by the tack it's at uh, 600 RPM, which means the engine is idling. That is, the transmission is now disengaged from the drivetrain, and we're just rolling along here under our own momentum. But as soon as I put my, put my foot back on the, on the accelerator, it's going to throttle right up, the clutch will engage, and away we'll go. Watch this. There's some throttle, picks up, 1,000 RPM. Didn't feel a thing. There was no hesitation, no lurch, no bump, no fumbling around to find a gear. It just got me right back where I wanted to go. Some people wonder how effective E-Coast is. I mean, the engine actually decouples from the transmission while rolling downhill. 
The thinking behind the idea is to conserve momentum so the truck can run out longer. Yeah, I was skeptical too, until I learned the results of a fuel economy test where a Cascadia Evolution, a truck almost identical to this one, managed 9.3 miles per gallon over a 2,400-mile cross-country trip. Believe it or not, for 650 miles of that trip, the truck was in e-coast, rolling along with the engine idling at 600 RPM. And now, here's a little demonstration of the kick-down feature. I just upshifted into 11s. We're at about uh, 44 miles an hour at 1200 RPM. So I kick it down to the pedal. Drops a gear, gives me 1600 RPM in 10th. And uh, now we've got a bit more horsepower to make a passing maneuver. Take my foot out of it. She double skip shifts up to 12. And it brings me down to 1100 RPM. And we're just easing along. We've made our passing maneuver. And life is good. Well, that's it for the basics. The clutch actuation on the DT12 is just amazing. It engages and disengages so smoothly, you'd swear you were driving a car with an automatic transmission. It skip shifts a lot. I found it grabbing at least two gears on most upshifts, and it even took three gears on a single shift on several occasions. That shows the range of engine speed this transmission is programmed to work with. There's a lot more good stuff to talk about with the DT12. In part two of our series, I'll demonstrate the difference in economy, performance, and manual modes. And yes, there's still a good reason to let us drivers shift gears in certain situations. For today's Trucking's Ultimate Test Drive series, I'm freelance trucking journalist Jim Park, touring the vineyards of sunny Napa, California. Drive safe and keep your revs down.